Okay, so we are working on coloring our type solutions. And just to do straightforward individual coloring of my shapes, I, I still have my black vector as a smart layer. I'm not going to rasterize it, right? And I just added a, a color overlay effect to it. I haven't added anything else. I just made it a dark blue. But I made a duplicate of it and rasterized that just so I could swap in these colors. And I think that's, that's very helpful. Also, because I rasterized it, I can do little things like clip it off or make little adjustments if I need to for the space. Okay, but back to my vector, I can add an effect of a drop shadow and change the angle of the drop shadow to really kind of show and make the most of it being on the corner. Right. So even though it's going over my border, what I do want to be careful of, though, is that my drop shadow is tight enough so that when it prints, because there'll still be white outside of the border on the print, I don't want it to be an arbitrary cut there. So I want to tighten it up maybe a little bit with my spread. And my opacity, I can make a little bit darker to make up for it. And there, that helps it feel like it's overlapping, but not so spread out. There we go. That it's likely to give me a little artifact there. Now, whatever background I use besides gray, that drop shadow will help, right? Unless it's a black background, and then the drop shadow, you can't darken black, but it still helps on the edges. Other things I can add. I can play with a texture effect. And it should remember the last thing I did. So there you see it. It's very subtle. I don't think I want it on the my part, but I could always just add that to my rasterized one too. And with that bevel and that highlight, makes it look very professional, right? So you play with, with these layer styles as you think is best. And once you've chosen all the settings for them, you can always turn them off. But I don't, I don't think I want it there because I want the really clean strokes around the uh, the text. But if I wanted that, honestly, because it's rasterized, all I would have to do, I'll do it on duplicate just to show you. If I want the bevel on the um, on the rainbow, but not on the text, all I have to do is select around it. like so. And then you can also play with the opacity of the layer styles, which can be really important when they're changing something like text so much. I was trying to get a decent selection here. Because wherever is not selected is going to have the texture. Okay, and then I delete. So when I delete, hopefully I'll get the bright white around the text, but keep that highlight on top of the rainbow. That didn't work. <laughs> so this is what I have to do. This is why I made a duplicate. I have to rasterize the layer style which then makes it all into pixels that then I can delete and turn it on underneath and turn it 
the effect off underneath. So now I've got it. And I've just got these little remnants I've got to clean up. So, so many options that you have. But it's a lot of, uh, a lot of problem solving. And it might seem, you know, like really, really picky to get hung up on these things. And I'm not even going to disagree with you. But when they're printed out, you will see them. So you get to decide how important they are, ultimately. And if it's a professional job, you know, that represents you, it's important to, to make sure your best work is put forward. But it's just like professional writers, playwrights, uh, musicians, any kind of creative career. An aspect to the job is proofing, <laughs> you know, editing, quality checking. And so that's kind of what we're doing at this phase once we've made our selections. So I can just use a low gradation eraser and kind of fade out that texture on the rainbow. Okay. So if I like that coloring, and I already made some coloring decisions for the other, I'm just gonna turn those effects back on. Now I can save it with those coloring options. I'm going to make it maybe a little bit darker behind. Maybe like that. Okay, so I say File, Save As, Assignment 8, Color Type Solutions for the poster to the desktop as a JPEG just to document the process. And that's the third thing we're gonna turn in for the assignment. And then the fourth thing is the finished poster. So what else do we need? Your poster needs to have type, it needs to have your spot illustration, and it needs to have a background. You can't just put it on plain white. That doesn't show enough um, versatility. So, so far I have my blocking sketch, I have my black and white text solution, and I have my color text solution. Right? And ideally, you want it to just keep building in visual engagement and interest with each step. And it's amazing, even though I switched to this kind of modern text, it's still pretty similar to my sketch. It takes up the same amount of space. So remember, that sketch is important. That's showing that you're in control of what you're doing. You're not just trying to copy something, right? And we're just using the typefaces as a tool. Okay. I got to say the little black stroke around the heart really worked out well, I think, especially with the highlight of the bevel. So happy surprises happen. So now let's give it a cool background. So let's turn on our spot illustration. Let's decide if we can place that spot illustration in a more interesting way. If you're unsure, you can always make a duplicate of it and then move your duplicate. I think it might be nice to kind of hide those back hooves, which are pretty boring, and make it big enough so it still overlaps. With the text a little bit, maybe even so that the tail breaks the border a little. Then I can try adding layer style effects to my spot illustration. So I could put a stroke around it, but that's a little crazy because I have all those glow effects, so that's not going to work. But maybe drop shadow if I treat it the right way, you know, can help. So that's a very subtle drop shadow. But that helps it stand out, even on just this really plain background. Um, now, the final thing is I need some sort of background 
the gradation is better than nothing, you know, and it's definitely better than white, even though that's getting pretty interesting now. So what can I do? Well, let's bring in something. Let's composite in a background. So I think I saved some, I found some uh, things I might want to use last night. Put them in my Dropbox. In here, I believe. And they're like torn paper and kind of cool comic book kind of uh, collages. There are a few I liked particularly. I marked those with greens. So let's see. Uh, this one I liked a lot. And they're all four megapixels or larger, which isn't as big as what our poster resolution is, but it works pretty well for texture overlays. So I'm going to stretch that across the entirety of it and then turn on my border above it. So let's turn on the border. There we go. The only problem with the border is I want my spot illustration above the border so that the tail overlaps. There we go. Now that's just a straight composited in background. It's just a photograph of a billboard that's like all the advertisements have been kind of stripped away, it leaves that texture. But it's a little overpowering, right? So what if I turn on the black behind it and I take its opacity down? That could be interesting. What if I composite some more? So I have this kind of texture behind it. And then what if I take something else, like this crazy <laughs> design? Looks a little psychedelic, right? Drop that in on top as a texture. Put it there while we're just playing. And then I could do things like use it to be an overlay. Yeah, yeah. So they're Google images, just like we did texture overlays for your composites. And then I can do things like add a stroke around it. Right? I can try embossing it. This is just playing, texturing it, giving it a glow. And now you see how crazy that texture is behind. It's a little busy. A little disorienting. That's, that's what it is on a plain background. It's like distorting the world. It's kind of interesting. Maybe I want to add a gradation, a gradient overlay on this photo. And I can set it to darker, darken it. So that's kind of helpful. Or I can set it to color burn, linear burn. Yeah, I think color burn's nice. So just like we did with, yeah, that kind of works. Just like we did with compositing our landscapes or our creatures, you're trying to come up with an interesting and engaging way of presenting your spot illustration and your text. Now, if it gets too busy, you can be in trouble, right? So here's another one I liked.
but that's really colorful. I like the torn edges, so I have to be selective about what parts of it I might use.